So firstly we need to go back to basics and define what an acid is. Uh, so we use this reaction as our example. So an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride is found to be strongly acidic. And the reason being is that hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And in the classic Bronsted Lowry definition, it's a proton donor. And when it sees water, which can act as a base, i.e. a proton acceptor, then you do get transfer of this proton to the water molecule to form our chloride anion and our hydronium ion here. So this is uh, the classic definition of an acid as a proton donor and a base as a proton acceptor. What we've also got when you have this system, for every acid, you have what's called the conjugate base of that acid. So when this molecule dissociates into this what's effectively the proton and this chloride anion it's the chloride anion of hydrochloric acid that's said to be the conjugate base because conceivably it could react via this negative charge to pick up a proton for the reverse reaction to happen so every acid has a conjugate base we've said that a bronsted acid is a proton donor and a bronsted base is a proton acceptor a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor We'll also talk about how we quantify the acid strength of a species. As I said, this is the hydroxonium or the hydronium ion here. This is your solvated proton here. So the concentration of this species in this equilibrium it can, can be considered as the concentration of the proton. And then we put up this reaction where we stated that pH is equal to the negative log of proton concentration, to so the negative log of the concentration of this species here. And another way of writing that, of course, is that pH is equal to log to the base 10 of 1 over the proton concentration. So if this term here is uh, bigger, then obviously pH becomes smaller. So we can say from that that uh, the higher the proton concentration, the more acidic the solution is because the more equilibrium lies to the right and therefore the lower the pH because of course this term here becomes larger. Okay, So pH is the first way that we can quantify the strength of an acid or how acidic a solution is. The uh, acidity constant or effectively the equilibrium constant for this reaction, so if we express Ka the acidity constant is of course the right hand side over the left hand side we get this equation here what we're more used to looking at is pKa which is actually the negative log of Ka so the strength of an acid is all uh, dependent on how well it dissociates how far the equilibrium lies to the right hand side so the stronger an acid the more the equilibrium will lie to the right and therefore the larger the Ka will be and therefore the smaller the pKa will be because it's the negative log of Ka and this is the way that we as organic chemists actually quantify the strength of an acid the stronger an acid the greater its Ka and therefore the smaller its pKa so an acid donates a proton uh, to the conjugate base of any other acid with a larger pKa so an acid can donate a proton to the conjugate base of a weaker acid and the products of this reaction must be more stable than the reactants. So another way I think of that is that the product acid and base of a reaction must be weaker acids and bases than the uh, starting materials. So as an example reaction, the reaction of citric acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate. And sodium hydrogen carbonate can be thought of as the conjugate base of carbonic acid. So if we were to see if, if this base is a strong enough base to deprotonate citric acid, we can compare the pKa's of the two acids here. So citric acid has a pKa of 3.15 and carbonic acid has a pKa much larger, 6.35. So citric acid has a lower pKa, so therefore it will be deprotonated by the conjugate base of this weaker acid here. So what we're saying is this reaction will occur where this negative charge can form a bond to this proton here and pull it off the citric acid, so the reaction will occur. To apply this acid-base theories uh, to analysing organic molecules for their basic or acidic properties. When you look for functional groups that could act as an acid or a base, what you're actually looking for are functional groups with the capacity to accept protons, and these would be basic functional groups within the molecule. Uh, we're looking for functional groups with the capacity to donate protons, and these of course would be the acidic functional groups within a molecule. And then of course if we were to look at the 
Lewis acid based definition we're also looking at functional groups with the capacity to donate lone pairs of electrons so if we're looking for uh, basic groups within a molecule we're looking for functional groups that have lone pairs of electrons and of course if there are functional groups that can accept a lone pair of electrons these will be effectively acidic groups within that molecule so this was just to show you how we apply this acid based theory to the reactivity of uh, molecules like morphine